Two opinions and opinions lead to righteousness. That is the title of this one. So, I wanted to a break one night and a break one night. I talk about whatever I want. And today I want to talk about the two opinion system that we have in America. It's gotten really stupid lately as of since the shooting happened and the kids were killed and everyone knows what I'm talking about. But the thing about it is, there seems to be two factions. Dumb and really dumb. That's basically what we get. And the thing about when you have two opinions controlling everything, the conservative one and the liberal one, they're stupid fucking opinions. The first stupid fucking opinion is, hey, let's give everybody guns. Now, this is not as stupid as they make it sound because many people who are teachers are actually ex-military people and they are also citizens, so some of them already have gun training. There is a problem, however. When you say a crazy person who wants to kill themselves won't walk into a school with a bunch of people with guns who are going to start shooting and killing people, this causes a problem because, see, they're crazy. See, crazy people don't do rational things like care if they get shot because they crazy. <laughs> okay? On the other hand... If you act like, you know, what we need is more gun control, we have lots, thousands of laws that govern lots of guns by people who don't know jack shit about guns. And all they do, literally, I was watching a show, and a lady looks at a gun on the screen, she doesn't talk about the caliber, the, the, um, the, the whether it's automatic, or whether it's burst, or, I said burst, I, don't, I forgot what they call it, semi-automatic, and... Bottom line is, they don't really know because they're hippie liberals and they don't want to learn about guns. These are educated people who brag about their smarts, but they don't want to learn anything. And it always it always makes me laugh because it's just it's that self righteous thing of once my opinion is challenged, instead of being rational and realizing there's another point of view except except the two that we accept, right then. You're stuck, so you have to go self-righteous stupid, which means you have to go, hey, let's arm everybody, or on this side of the equation, it's, oh no, what we need is more regulation, and more regulation will do nothing. Crazy people and crazy thug motherfuckers don't care about breaking the law. It doesn't work. You can't get a crazy, he's crazy. You understand what crazy mean? <laughs> it's like, didn't give a fuck, Okay. <laughs> Now, how do you really protect children in schools? Let's pretend for a second that we live in a rational country where there's more than two opinions. And that's four, actually. But let's just pretend there's, no, there's more than just two opinions, the right and the left opinion. Let's pretend we live in a society where we can look at something objectively. Now, first of all, we should have did this shit after 9-11. We should have did this shit after Columbine High School. We should have did this shit back in the gangbang 90s when every goddamn inner city school was dealing with this. And even put cops in the school doesn't necessarily stop it. The problem you have is very, very simple. We are not treating this like what it is. It's an inevitable thing that happens, but it happens rarely. There's another thing that had this kind of pattern. It was called fire. Fire was this amazing thing. There was this thing called the Chicago Fire. Google it if you want to look it up. And it was this thing. Fire was amazing. It, it would destroy lots of stuff. So we started to realize that everything can't be made out of wood. And then we started to realize that we needed some stuff called like fire retardant. And we had fire alarms. And then we could in um, fire ratings on furniture and carpet and all this stuff. And it was all this stuff, the acceptance of the reality that someone can do some things. And we had this other shit called hurricanes. And these hurricanes would come and it would blow things down. I mean, water's high level floods and these hurricanes, we started to figure out how to solve those. So we built these buildings that were hurricane resistant. We built these rooms that you could go in in case of a hurricane, tornado. You get the gist, right? Right, we didn't say, shoot the tornado. Nor did we say we should make tornadoes illegal. <laughs> because they're inevitable. We can't stop them. Okay, so once we accept and acknowledge that reality, then we have to accept and acknowledge another reality, which is... This is terrorism. Yes, I said it. It's terrorism. We need to say that. Let's all say it together. Terrorism. 
I know it's tough because it's not Ahmad G. the dude, and it's not some foreign crazy guy, or it's not a minority, it's just a white guy who crazy, and he is a terrorist, okay? So, how do we combat crazy people who have guns, be it a gangbanger, a drug dealer, a terrorist, uh, Anybody who goes in somewhere and tries to kill people. Well, I think we use what's been successful against hurricanes, fire, and other things. Basically, we use rational thought and we use a different point of view than two that work. First of all, we take these two points of view and we tell them both to shut the fuck up. Because we already have 20,000 rules, more than 20,000 laws governing guns. There's no way you can effectively enforce all that. Two, we already have enough people with guns. There's a gun store down the street uh, in this little part of um, where I stay at. And this little gun store sells over 3,000 guns a month. Okay? Everybody got one. <laughs> okay? That's not the problem. The problem is we haven't created a bullet rating. We have no reaction. In other words, we need gun alarms that go off when a gun goes off in a school. That works. We need alarms. We need a bullet rating for doors in schools. When this shooting happened, it would have been more effective that the teachers could close the door and the room would then be secure and bulletproof than it would be to give the teacher a gun and they have to leave the room hoping to win against the guy. <laughs> because, see, there's a lack of understanding that if I have, say, an AK-47 and a bunch of teachers have handguns, I don't care if I live or die, they do. I'm going to stand in the room and I'm going to shoot across and they're going to have to shoot me full of enough holes to kill me. What During this time, bullets will be flying through walls. It will be going through brick. It will be going through steel depending on how far away it is. In other words, if I have a high-powered rifle, I'm still killing people and achieving my objective even if I'm being shot 42 times. You're dealing with a terrorist. The way you stop this is you have to first control the infrastructure. The walls need to have a bullet rating. A kid caught in the hallway, what do they do? Well, that means we need to have a bulletproof locker rating or a bulletproof room that people can go in, such as like, let's say, at the theater shooting in Colorado. The guy walks in, an alarm goes off that says, there's a gunshot. Goes off everywhere. The seats would have a bulletproof rating, which would mean that the people running from the gunmen would basically have the ability to hide in, behind the seats. So you have something that's bulletproof. If you have a room where people can lock themselves in to get away from the gunman with the high-powered rifle that is AK-47 resistant or bulletproof, then you have the ability to protect people if they can get to that room. When you walk into a mall or somewhere, you need to have passive metal detectors. One of the problems with checkpoints or security is they become the point to avoid. So, if you want to know who has what, you need to have passive detection. And if you have passive detection, then you can know this person has a gun, let's get security. The other part is when buildings are designed, they're not designed tactically. They're not designed to give the advantage to the person defending against the shooter. When they design uh, a place, we do design it for people running away from a fire. This is bad for shooters. This is great for a person who's a crazy person shooter, but bad for the people avoiding the shooter. Because if, when you walk into a theater, for example, you often start on the bottom, and when you come up, everyone's facing you, and you're already there. So if you're going, if someone's walking into, say, a theater or a school, the distance between that point of engagement, in other words, the point where he can now engage the people he's going to kill, you need to have an ability to have those people to have an escape route. And you also have to have a detection system before they get to that point. And it can be passive. And all it can do is ring an alarm and then people can run out of the theater. This limits the shooter's ability to kill people. But this is by alarms and thinking and design and regulations that are actually enforceable. Like telling a company if you design a theater chair, maybe it has to have a metal plate in it. That metal plate is, has, has to be a certain level of bullet resistant. That helps. <laughs> so, we need more rational thought about the situation and the shootings and 
and things like that. And understand that this is no different than, say, you know, um, a fire or a hurricane. It's a matter of tactically defeating the person. The other part is resisting the person. The best way is not for people to have guns. The truth is, when you shoot at me, you have to see me. Right, a bright light would do it better. And I know people don't understand that because the first thing they go is, oh, I was in a situation, I want a gun. Well, first of all, you have to understand, if you can detect the person early, then the defenses change because then the tactics change. Because if I know, if the gun goes off, if you know when a guy walks down the school hallway that he has a gun and there's students on his side and the teacher can close the door and the door is now locked. But let's say there's a teacher caught in the hallway, right? But they can flick with an alarm. And the alarm is loud. And it also activates bright lights. Now this person can still shoot, right? But they are now disabled. They can't see me to shoot me, even if they want to. There's tactical advantages you can give yourself. These things work better than guns because the problem with guns is that they miss. And it's not Hollywood. See, in Hollywood, when the officer shoots a gun and it misses, the bullet magically disappears. In real life, when you're shooting and they're shooting, those bullets are going through walls, they're reflecting, they're deflecting, all this stuff. Sometimes you could... I've seen a guy in a SWAT team once in a, in a documentary, and he, he, they was, he was showing off the bulletproofing they put in the armpit. And the reason they put this in the armpit is because a guy got shot, he got blasted with a shotgun, and a tiny bit of buckshot went through his armpit into his heart and killed it. Tiny bit. You understand it? So you're increasing deadly variables. I would rather limit the ability of your ability, you, limit you to fight me, find me, attack me. These things I all have control of because you can control these things from the design of the school. You can disable the what they can see. You can have a loud alarm which will disable their ability to hear because even though you can't stop a person who wants to kill themselves, you can still they still feel pain. So you can still limit them that way. And that's more of a realistic way because I'd rather risk blinding the children or deafening the children than shooting the children. <laughs> the other part is there's an assumption that the teachers won't be the crazy person and the crazy person will also know that every other teacher has a gun. You have to have a way to even, let's say in the classroom if this situation happens, you have to have a way to protect them there. And that's where a bright light, a loud sound, things like that would be more helpful in bulletproof desks and bulletproof walls, and bulletproof ratings, and escape routes, things like that, again, more helpful. If you simply give every teacher a gun, and then one day a teacher loses their shit and shoots up the classroom, how did you really help? You didn't. You have to deal with this the way you deal with fire. And you have to admit it's a terrorist attack, an inevitable thing, and you have to do it strategically. But you cannot do it through macho or arrogance or fear or lack of focus or being too passive one way or another. You will always end up screwed that way. At least that's my opinion. That's my break one nine, guys. Write down, put down in the comments whatever you believe. But that's what I believe. Talk to you later.